a three forward and short uh, film. Uh, change its ACML echoes. 1992. Does that make us feel old? <gasps> Look at that, when I had time. I had time to do stuff like that. Mint on a road bike. <laughs> <laughs> Look how much he's changed. His head's got so much bigger. His body's got smaller. And I was just working away on it. Not really, you know, because I work in my spare room. You just send off pictures every month. And I had no idea that it was popular until I turned up at a mountain bike race. And they said that I was there and I just pretty much got mobbed by kids wanting uh, drawings of the sheep. So that was its heyday in the Mulvans back in the 90s, I guess. And it's just um, kept going because no one's told me to stop. And it's uh, about 18 months away from being 30 years old, which is a bit scary. And uh, I started doing it for Boss Collection. Just a little black and white strip once a month, and it went to half a page, and then it went to a full page. And relationships with Boss Collection kind of broke down because they weren't paying me. It was only £15, but they still weren't paying me. Um, and MBUK had contacted me and asked if I wanted to do it for them, and I had politely declined because I was working for this other magazine and I rang them up and said can I swap and uh, they said yes and it kind of took off from there really. In the early days I was really inspired by a guy called Hunt Emerson who is an English cartoonist in Birmingham and he's been around for ages and he did Thunderdogs and he did stuff uh, Firkin that Tim Manley who edited MBUK wrote and this is Emerson here this is my cat here. He's named after Hunt Emerson. He's a hero. He doesn't catch too stupid to know that. Uh, and there was a magazine called Deadline that was full of um, kind of the new young punks of cartoons. Uh, which is where Tank Girl came from. Um, and I was very influenced by that. Um, and also The Far Side and Kevin and Hobbes. <laughs> After this one, I remember doing this, I was working upstairs and this took me a long time and uh, a few days after I did it and sent it off I bumped into my neighbour and he went, are you okay? Because <laughs> every time I looked in the window I just saw you hunched over your desk. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> God, I've forgotten I'd done that. I'm training to do the Transcontinental next year. At the moment, it's just getting the miles in and just doing silly big rides that bigger than I've ever, ever done before. Um, and I'm training with a friend who also helps do the Transcontinental. And a month or so ago, we did the 600k Vordax. And last weekend, we rode to Cambridge, stayed over with um, some friends there and then rode back the next day, and so that was 140 miles each day. Everything I do now is kind of looking forward to, I don't think looking forward is the right phrase, but uh, looking to the, doing the transcom, so just getting, getting the miles in. Old kit for me is massively important. I'm really, really, really fussy about the stuff that I ride and the stuff that I wear, and the, the smallest little niggle can really piss me off, because when you're in the saddle for even just the, well, I'll say four hours is a short ride, because now four hours is going to have to be a short ride. Um, if there's a, if you're saying that your jersey is half a centimetre too short, and there's a little gap between that and, the, and your glove, and there's that's where the cold and the wet ends in, that can really annoy you. I'm quite well known for being very fussy about what I wear, and also the setup of my bikes is, you know, very, very me. I, I hate noisy bikes and squeaky bikes and creaky bottom brackets and gears that don't work. So, we're all, you know. how did the fabric thing come about? Yeah, they gave me some saddles to put on the bike for the photo shoot, obviously, and uh, I'm really 
like I said, really fussy about my kit and I'm really, a saddle is one of the most important things that you need to think about because um, you're going to be sitting on it for a very, very long time. And over the years, I think I've only, I've pretty much stuck to two saddles. Um, and the fabric is now the third saddle that I'm quite happily used for, for, for days and days and days and days. And even though they gave me a free one after the photo shoot, if I, didn't, if I wasn't comfortable with it, I'd just chuck it in the box of saddles that I don't find comfortable or give it to a friend. But I'm now quite happy to put, put one on my bike and ride it. Mm -hmm. And this isn't even the expensive one, this is the cheap 35, 40 quid one. Mm -hmm. And for that kind of money, it's brilliant. I'm massively wow. informed by my sense of place because I've lived in Brighton most of my life. And I, from my house here, it's two minutes up onto the South Downs. Um, so, so I'm really proud of where I live. And I'm proud of the South Downs and I, I love them to pieces. You never get tired of, of riding up there? No. You? No. Well, I mean, yeah, there's, there's stuff in here that is quite South Downsy. Yeah. I've, the, the biggest compliment that I've ever been given is when somebody goes for a bike ride on a sunny summer's afternoon on the South Downs and they go, oh, it was just like one of your cartoons. And that makes me so happy. And then the, the people always say, if you had one final place where you could ride your mountain bike, where would you go? And for me, it would be just the ride to the top of the hill on a summer's evening. Doesn't have to be anywhere posh.